Today I've got a problem from the TMUA. This is the admissions test you have to do if you want to study economics or computer science at Cambridge University or maths at a bunch of other universities. Let's have a look. Which one of the following is a sufficient condition for the equation x cubed minus 3x squared plus a equals 0, where a is a constant to have exactly one real root? So we have this cubic equation here, a is a constant, and we want it to have one real root. Which of these conditions here uh, is a sufficient condition for this to have one real root? Uh, I'm actually going to be showing you kind of two ways to think about this problem. The first way I'm going to be solving it a bit more directly. Uh, the second way is kind of using uh, some really nice time-saving techniques, uh, which is super useful if you are planning on doing the TMUA because it is a highly time-pressured exam. Let's look at the way of solving this kind of directly. Um, we have this cubic here and we're interested in the number of roots. Uh, you know, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you know that that kind of is a clue to just sketch this. So we want to sketch this and then we've got this A here. So in fact, I'm going to kind of ignore the a here for a second because it is just a constant at the end. I'm going to first sketch y equals x cubed minus 3x squared. And this is quite nice because I can factor out an x squared and this just becomes x squared times x minus 3. So positive cubic. It's got a repeated root at 0. And it looks something like that. Um, so that would be 3 be zero. Awesome. So my cubic looks like this. And now I want this to have, uh, now if I take in the plus a aspect of this equation, that's just going to correspond to this cubic being translated up or down by a. So if a was seven, I'd move this cubic graph up seven units. And now we want this cubic to have one real root. Well, how many does it have at the moment? Well, it has two. So one at zero, one at three but we want it to only have one. So we can see here, there's two things that we could do. We could either vertically translate this downwards. And if I do that by any amount, I can see that now this will only have one real root somewhere over here, because this to maximum turning point will go down slightly. And so we would only have one point where it crosses the X axis. So that's great. So that tells me that A can be any negative number, and this cubic will have only one real solution. Or on the flip side, if I use a different color here, if I was to bring this original black cubic up by enough, so that this turning point here went above the x-axis, my new graph would look something like that. And again, I'd only have one real solution. So I just need A to go to be sufficiently positive to make this graph move up. And the question is, well, how much does it need to go up by? Well, to do that, we just need to work out the turning point here. And that's not too difficult to do. We can just differentiate y in the in the black curve and use that to find the turning point. So if we do that here, dy dx is 3x squared minus 6x. And if you factor out the 3x, we get 3x times x minus 2. So we've got one turning point when x is 0, one turning point when x is 2. This one's obviously the one when x is 0. So this one will be when x is 2. OK, so when x is 2, on the black curve, y is equal to 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared, which is minus 4. And so that means that this y value here, it's a little bit difficult to see, but that would be minus 4, like so. And so that means that I need to move this black graph at least four units up, in fact, strictly more than four units, because if I did it for exactly four units, this turning point would be on the x-axis and would therefore be a root. So it would look something like that, and I'd have a root there and a root there. That's not allowed. So it has to move strictly more than four units up. So in the blue case, I can have a is bigger than four. So essentially what we've shown here is that if we want this cubic to have one real root, we either need a to be less than zero or a to be bigger than four. Great. Now we can just look through these options here and see which one of these is a sufficient condition for either a to be bigger than four or a to be less than zero. Well, option a is not correct because um, if a is positive, that's not sufficient because a could be one and a being one does not satisfy the blue or the red inequality. So it's not that. Similarly, it's not b because a would be allowed to be zero there. It's not c because a would be allowed to be four there. Uh, it's not d because a would be allowed to be three there. Um, could potentially be e. It can't be f because a would also be allowed to be four. Uh, it can't be g because nine over four doesn't satisfy either of these inequalities. And similarly, it can't be h. And so therefore, 
the answer must be E. Uh, the modulus of A is bigger than 4. Uh, and you might ask, well, this inequality is not the same as this, but that's fine because the question is asking for sufficient. So if the modulus of A is bigger than 4, we can deduce that either A is bigger than 4 or A is less than minus 4. But if A is less than minus 4, then A is negative anyway. So if modulus of A is bigger than 4, then one of these inequalities will be true. And so the cubic will have one real root. And therefore we get our answer. Now, that's the kind of first way of solving this. Now, how can we kind of eliminate a bunch of options straight off the bat? So I thought I'd show you how to do this. But if you are new to the channel and you are someone who is looking to study math at university or a similar subject, and you've got to do these admissions tests, got to do these interviews, do get in touch. So I have a tutoring business, JPI Math Tutoring. And what I do is I tutor students from all across the globe to want to study at these elite universities, Oxford and Cambridge predominantly. And one of the things I'm really proud of is I have an over 80% success rate. So over 80% of my students end up receiving offers from either Oxford or Cambridge. And as someone who's been uh, through the mathematics course at Oxford, I, I can highly recommend going and striving for that top, top course. Anyway, link in the description below. Let's have a look at the second way of kind of solving this slash eliminating a bunch of options, which is really what you would want to be doing in the TMUA. So if I just clear this out here, we know that there is only one correct option. And we're going to use that logic to help us deduce which one is the correct option. So, for example, I can eliminate option A. Why can I eliminate option A? Well, because if option A was the correct answer, then that means that whenever A is positive, this cubic will have one real solution. But that would then also imply that C is true i.e. C would be a sufficient condition because if it is genuinely true that whenever A is positive, this cubic has one real solution, then that means if A is at least four, that would also, because if A is at least four, then ergo it's also positive, that would mean that this cubic would have one real solution. But then that would mean that option C is correct as well. And we can't have two correct answers. So let me just go over that again. If A is correct, then that would mean that C would also have to be correct, but we can't have two correct answers. So option A can't be the correct answer. Similarly, I can rule out option, um, which option can I rule out? I can rule out, um, which, uh, I can rule out option D. No, sorry, I can, uh, yes, I can rule out option D because if A was less than four was a correct option, uh, was the correct answer so that whenever A is less than four, this cubic has one real solution, then that would mean that B is correct as well. Because uh, if A is uh, less than or equal to zero, certainly it's less than four. Um, Cool. I can also eliminate um, perhaps a couple of others. So I can eliminate uh, F. So if the modulus of A is less than or equal to 4 um, was a correct option, well, then that would mean that both G and H would be correct as well. Um, so if whenever the modulus of A is less than or equal to 4 made this equation have only one real solution, then that means in particular when A equals 9 over 4, this equation would have one real solution. So I can eliminate F because of that. Um, and perhaps as a, a way you can eliminate a few others. Is I'm being a little, little bit slow at this. Um, but you can certainly eliminate quite a few options from this kind of logic that if there has to only be one correct answer, if one answer being correct implies another answer is correct, you know that that original answer cannot be correct. Uh, it's a quite nice bit of logic uh, and process of elimination technique to help you narrow down. So if you are like, you know, you're doing this problem and you've got a minute left of the exam and you don't think you're going to be able to solve it directly, you can maybe eliminate some and then just have a stab out of the remaining options because uh, there's no negative marking. Um, so this is something I always recommend to find a good balance of when you're tackling these TMUA problems, both eliminating some options if there's easy ways to eliminate options, but also being able to solve the question a bit more directly as well. Um, so in this case, I think maybe solving it directly is a little bit easier if you know what to do. But maybe you can also eliminate. Um, you could also at this stage, if you have these options left, like say, for example, G, if I wanted to test whether that was correct or not, I could just try 9 over 4 and see if I could solve this cubic. But that's actually going to be kind of difficult um, to do. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.